Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brian Penovich here with a quick update on our Arctic blast heading our way. You've got about uh, 24 hours to prepare for the cold air. And while there is going to be a little bit of ice in the mountains tonight and tomorrow, a little bit of snow in the mountains tomorrow night into Friday morning, the real story is the cold. And that's what you need to prepare for your, your you people, your pets, and in particular your pipes in your house and we'll talk more about the arctic blast here in a minute so where is the arctic blast well first things first we've got winter weather advisories up for the mountains and the adjacent foothills because this low pressure system is going to move up the coast it's going to be moving this direction this low pressure system is going to bring some moisture into the region 99.9 percent .9 of us are going to see rain out of this but there is going to be some ice in the mountains the actual arctic front is back here in the midwest so let's go through time here i'm going to go down and i'll show you this Hour by hour, we're going to go over the next 48 hours. Um, we'll go through time, and you can see this low pressure system moving up the coast here. Um, it's moving slowly but surely, so we're looking at a future cast. I'm going to go into this afternoon and tonight. I'm going to stop this around um, basically 8 p.m. tonight. You can see the moisture starting to spread into the region. The Arctic front is right there. That's the Arctic front. This is low pressure way ahead of the Arctic front. Um, that's going to be moving in. So we go into tonight. I'm going to go into the overnight hours and notice we're starting to see some pink show up on the eastern facing slopes of the mountains. That's where we could see some freezing rain initially. That freezing rain initially um, could ice up on some of the elevated surfaces. This is not going to be a power line issue or really a tree issue. This is about slick roads in the mountains and foothills. You could see that freezing drizzle or rain could last well into the overnight hours into early tomorrow morning. I'll stop this at basically 8 a.m tomorrow morning and you can see it's mainly, um, mainly a heavy rain but you see the icing occurring and really starts to shift north so eventually you know the thing about freezing rain it's a self-limiting process eventually the air warms up because the process of freezing water you're removing heat from the water where does that heat go it goes into the air and slowly warms things up unless you have a constant supply of new cold air. In this case, we don't. It's going to be used up pretty quickly. As we go through time, you can see that rain kind of becomes all rain, even in the mountains and foothills. And we go into tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to stop this basically in the middle of the day tomorrow. The low pressure begins to shift away. Oh, by the way, on the coast, got to keep an eye. It's warm enough in the coastal sections in North Carolina. There might be some severe weather. So just a heads up there. So where's the Arctic front? You could see it right there. Look at that thing. That is a nasty Arctic front moving across the middle of the country. That's where the cold air is. Now I'm going to flip over to the temperatures real quickly just to show you how pronounced that Arctic front is. So this is the middle of Friday afternoon. The, the cold air isn't here yet. The area I'm worrying about uh, severe weather tomorrow, you see where the warm air surges in? This is right around noontime tomorrow. So you can see the Arctic front diving in from the north and west, and that is the real deal. That is going to bring some significantly colder temperatures. And let me quickly just show you the temperatures. So we'll go high temperatures today, mid-40s, high temperatures tomorrow, kind of deceiving. Uh, excuse me, this is this is Thursday. This, this was Thursday, excuse me. Today will basically be in the 40s and 50s. This is Friday. So Friday is a really weird day because the high temperature is likely going to happen early in the day and then the bottom's going to drop out. I expect the Arctic front to move through in the morning hours. So it'll probably be above freezing in the morning um, and warm and by the afternoon below freezing. We go through time. This is the high temperature on Saturday. Okay, so nobody's expected to be above freezing on Saturday. On Sunday, we might barely get above freezing. So there's going to be about a 48 to 55 hour time frame where we'll be below freezing and that will cause widespread issues. Even on Monday, temperatures barely get back to 40. So we're going to spend most of the day at or below the freezing mark. We really don't start to warm up. And this is Tuesday until probably I'd say Wednesday. So it's a pretty long stretch. Now let me back up here and show you the actual low temperatures because the low temperatures you know, these are the low temperatures going into Thursday morning. You see why there's going to be some icing in the mountains. We'll be in the 30s across the Piedmont. Here's the low temperatures, though, for Friday. And again, this could happen in the middle of the day. So we could see temperatures fall, and the low could happen right around midnight going into Saturday. So, you know, single digits to below zero in the mountains, mid to low 20s across the Piedmont. Then look at the low temperatures on Saturday morning, Christmas Eve morning, below zero in the mountains, maybe in some locations. 10 to 15 degrees below zero. There'll be wind as well, so wind chills will be dangerously low. We're likely gonna see wind chill advisories and warnings for the first time. In, in the Charlotte area, we haven't seen a wind chill advisory since 2014. In the mountains, it's been you know more recent, but this is the coldest air, I honestly would say, on Christmas, probably since 1983, 89. 
um, depending on what location you're at. But really for overall, just the coldest air we've seen since 2018. So it's been a while and it's prolonged. I mean, it's three or four days. I say prolonged. Eventually it moves out next week, but three, four days of these temperatures at night in the teens in single digits and afternoon highs only in the 30s, that's going to cause widespread issues. So I showed the, the, a graphic like this the other day. Um, you need to take full precautions. And what does that mean? Most homes are pretty well adapted if you're a modern home for freezing conditions. What you need to watch out for is irrigation systems, pools with PVC pipes that are exposed, um, your hose and spigot. And again, your spigot, you can wrap it with something, but disconnect the hose. What happens is uh, freezing water is a chain reaction. Once it starts, it then starts off the crystallization process. Um, you, this will happen if your hose has water in it, the ice will form the hose and then it'll work its way back into the house. So you want to disconnect the hose so you keep that process or that chain reaction from getting into your home and then cover that spigot or the valve outside. You can buy little things at Home Depot, Lowe's, but honestly, just taking anything, a rag or anything and wrapping around there just to keep it a little bit warmer. Plants, if you have tropical plants, take full precautions. Um, if you have crawl spaces that are vented, Make sure those vents are closed. Keep the hot air in your house and around your pipes. Also know where your shutoff valve is for water in case something does break and you need to turn it off. Um, and again, I, I posted yesterday, a lot of plumbers have been really awesome in our area that if they're gonna be available on Christmas weekend, um, that they, they will put their information on my page. So if you go to my Facebook page, you'll see a lot of contact information there. So this is the real deal, folks. This is the kind of cold air that does cause pipe issues. So if you're even remotely concerned about it at all, go overboard. You're never going to regret not protecting a pipe once it bursts because trust me, broken pipe is like the worst thing in the world. The mess it causes is just completely horrible. You don't ever want to deal with that. So let's go back to this arctic front because this is the real deal i'm going to back it up just a second here so i can kind of show you how this front progresses through time and just to give you a timing standpoint um, again it's fun and it's cool for the holidays but man cold air is no joke and if you have pets please make sure they're protected make sure they're inside have a warm place to stay this is not for the faint of heart folks i mean this is not typical weather um, we do not normally see weather this cold for this long a lot of our homes a lot of us don't have jackets a lot of uh, the dogs don't have fur that's made for this. Um, you know, a lot of vehicles just aren't ready for this. Um, this is kind of the, the cold there that'll catch you off guard, especially that it's going to last for two, three, four days. We'll go into a Friday morning and look at that front. I mean, look how sharp that front is. I mean, that is going to be crazy to see that move in. And that moves across the Piedmont. This is uh, 8 a.m. on Friday morning, by the way. 9, 10, 11. 12. So you get the idea. It's probably going to be warmer when you go to bed, um, even the middle of the night, Thursday night, Friday morning, and then the middle of the afternoon, dinner time, the temperature will be plummeting. And again, that's all below zero or below zero in the mountains and single digits and in the Piedmont teens and 20s. So, um, and look how it invades most of the country. This is just crazy to see the cold air. So please be ready now. This is the real deal. The cold air is the story here. I know we'd love to see snow on Christmas. It's not happening, folks. We're not, even in the mountains, it's not that much snow. The cold, the cold, the cold is the story here. Prepare for it. People, pets, and pipes. That's what we're worried about all the way around. And your plants if you're trying to save them, especially the tropicals.